everybody. Welcome to my vocal tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about death metal vocals, a little bit of my vocal chain, what I do for my processing, and what I do to get them to sit right in the mix with everything else. For today's session, I had a band come in, a local band called Phil Spewer, and they were nice enough to let me use their session for this video. So I do thank you guys for that. There's three vocalists on these tracks, and all three of these vocalists came in, and they tracked really well. They were very consistent, so it was fairly straight up. We'll just get right into it. Let's hear everything finished. That sounds really good. I will go ahead and just bypass all of my plugins, all of my sends, and we will hear it how it sounds with no processing, just raw vocals. <laughs> So that still sounds really good. The first thing I do when I'm getting vocals in the in the studio, I will go ahead and just high pass everything that I don't need. Every frequency has a fundamental. Um, there's a great free plugin that you can download. It's called Voxango Span, and it is an awesome metering plugin. I use this on every track I do. It's fantastic. So I will play what I'm listening to, and I will find the fundamental frequency, and then I am going to high pass everything below it. This is a real bird, safe in the endless slumber. This world, this land, ignored by senseless men. You see the DIY, you burn in endless sorrow. Okay, so we've got a fundamental of 600 hertz and about 3 to 4k on the highs. So, what I'm going to do is go over to my EQ. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to go a little drastic with the high pass filter and then I'm going to pull it. I'm going to back it off until I get the full dynamics of the vocals back. And that's essentially just going to cut out any of the nastiness that we don't want. This is a real bird, safe in the endless slumber. This world, this land, ignored by senseless men. You see the DIY, you burn in endless sorrow. We cry, we die, for there's no tomorrow. So that sounds really good. You can't hear a difference when I bypass this, and that's what you want. You don't want to take out any of the vocals because that's that's what we want. We want to keep the vocals. You just want to take out everything in that frequency that we don't want. I'm not worried about high pass or low passing because upper harmonics don't harm the frequencies. It's the lower harmonics that mud up the whole spectrum. So we want to get rid of that and uh, take note that the gain staging on this um, is very crucial. You want to make sure that your gain staging for any plugin you use is set correctly so your input and output signals are coming out equal. Uh, otherwise, when you bounce your mix, it is going to sound different than how you mixed it. This is a real bird, safe in the endless slumber, this world, this land. So that looks really good. I'm happy with that. Uh, so I that's pretty much what I did across the board. I cut out anything that I don't need below the fundamental. Then, next thing I did is I put a, a gate. Well, really it's an expander um, to kind of take out 
any of the room noise or anything I don't want to hear. It just kind of attenuates everything. This is a human sympathy in the slumber. This world, this land, ignored by senseless men. Yes, they. And you can't see anything when she's doing a continuous line like that, but you can see when I cut the track off. It's fully attenuating this signal. Um, I put a kind of a soft knee on it to kind of just help it roll off a little more naturally. And uh, that really helps. Uh, just depending on um, how you record things sometimes. So that's really all I did for her vocals there. And then I did a little bit of step compression. This is a human sympathy in the slumber. This world, this land, ignored by senseless men. You've seen the DIY. You burn in endless sorrow. We cry, we die, for there's no tomorrow. And that's even a little heavier on the compression than what I'd like. This is a human sympathy in the slumber. This world, this land, ignored by senseless men. You've seen the DIY. You burn in endless sorrow. We cry, we die, for there's no tomorrow. What I'm looking for is I want to compress that signal just slightly. And I'm giving it a fast attack and a very fast release. And what that's going to do is it's going to grab the transients um, as soon as they hit, and it's going to let go of them as soon as they hit. So it's essentially just attacking the peaks of it. Um, and it's really more of a leveling compression than um, anything else. This is a human! So that sounds good. Um, next, I send everything to some reverb. And then I send everything to a distortion track. This is a human sympathy in the slumber. This world, this land, ignored by senseless men. Now, I know it sounds disgusting, but the reason I do distortion tracks is if you look at your span tool, and you play this track back with distortion, what it does is it accentuates the upper harmonics of the frequency, and it just kind of adds uh, more musical tonal balance to everything. So I parallel process uh, with distortion for some bands, um, and it just kind of helps everything sound more full and warm and less papery. And we will hear, or we'll just check out the distortion here in the span. This is a human sympathy in the slumber. This world, this land, ignored by senseless men. You see the DIY. You burn in endless sorrow. We cry, we die, for there's no tomorrow. So you can kind of hear it uh, helping out the upper end of those highs and with the lows as well. And those all get blended in. I attacked the layering slightly different. Um, and then I sent these to automated delays uh, for different sections of the song. Um, so those are essentially the same and pan separately too. So that way you get more of a full sound. So there's my automation for the volume. Um, now what I do is I send all of these vocal tracks to a vocal sub. I send my vocal sub to a submaster, and then my submaster goes to my master output. Um, and that just allows me different stages of bus compression, which is something I am a big fan of. I like step compression more than using one compressor and slamming something really hard and making it work too hard. So on my vocal sub, 
We've got a compressor. It just kind of glues everything together. Um, kind of a slow attack, slow release, um, somewhat low ratio. Just something to kind of squeeze everything together, sound cohesive. Okay, so this is a big thing here. Um, so let's do this. So, um, that sounds okay, um, but I can hear the highs fighting with the guitars, and it just kind of a back and forth battle. Nothing's really sitting in a pocket, nothing uh, has its own home. So, what I did is, again, I pulled up my span tool and I found the fundamental of the frequency. So for the vocals, the fundamental of the frequency that I wanted to boost was right around 3k. So I added a 4 dB boost at 3k with, um, you know, uh, not too narrow, not too wide of a width. And then I found the fundamental of my guitars um, and that was somewhere right around 5k and I dropped that 4 dB. Now what I did is I come back over here and I did the exact opposite over here. So I carved out a spot for the vocals at 4 dB at 3k and then I boosted the spot for the guitars at 5k. So it's just kind of carving out a little spot in your, uh, uh, frequency spectrum for each one to live. And these are after all of my processing. So this is the last thing that the EQ sees. So you're not really affecting everything else you've e EQ'd previously. It's just um, kind of taking the final result and then notching it for each one to live uh, right next to each other and not affect each other so much. So let's hear how that sounds. This is on your mind. Without those EQs, you really lose some of those highs with the guitars, and vice versa. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that I could tell you in this video is always try to help everything live with each other. You don't want to carve out a whole lot because that does affect um, harmonics above and below, but you do need to help everything fit together, live together, and be one cohesive unit. Um, and then last but not least, I do a sibilance on the vocal sub just to kind of hit the S's and the K's for everybody. And you can see here where it's attenuating those S's and uh, that kind of helps out quite a bit. So that's it in a nutshell. This session went really well. It was really smooth. So I just, I've had inserts all up and down vocal tracks before. So if that says anything about the talent of those vocalists, um, which I think it does. So, all right. Well, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more tutorial videos in the future.